peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for salvation. Thank you so much for your perfectly preserved word in English, the King James Bible. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share your word in this video. I pray that this will be done out of love and edification to glorify you through your word by the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Forgive us for our shortcomings, for we are far from perfect. May your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. James chapter 2 is a passage often misunderstood and misused to justify lordship salvation or a type of work-based salvation. As you will see today, this passage is not about obtaining salvation, nor is this a passage that explains how to keep salvation, quote unquote. And today we will examine Pastor Nelson from GodQuestions.org. The things that he shares in today's video are wrong teachings that are unfortunately prevalent in some of the quote unquote denominations within Christianity today. Let's get into it. Today's question is, why is faith without works dead? In this video, I'll answer that question from a biblical perspective. Then afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. James says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. James chapter 2, verse 26. Faith without works is a dead faith because the lack of works reveals an unchanged life or a spiritually dead heart. Now, as always, brethren, we must always ask ourselves, for what saith the scriptures? First and foremost, we have to establish the audience being addressed. And verse 1 gives away who this message is for, James chapter 2. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons? You see that? The word says, my brethren. The audience addressed in this chapter consists of saved believers, not unbelievers, who need salvation. There are many verses that say that true saving faith will result in a transformed life. That faith is demonstrated by the works we do. Pastor Nelson from GodQuestion.org, who I understand adheres to four out of the five points of the tulip of Calvinism, like many Calvinists or Reformed theologians, seems to lean towards Lordship salvation, which is a form of work-based salvation either before or after salvation. That's why Lordship salvation is a false teaching or a false gospel which damns people to hell. And I did a couple of videos on that. How we live reveals what we believe and whether the faith we profess to have is a living faith. James chapter 2 verses 14 through 26 is sometimes taken out of context in an attempt to create a works-based system of righteousness, but that is contrary to many other passages of scripture. James is not saying that our works makes us righteous before God, but that real saving faith is demonstrated by good works. Now to use this passage of James chapter 2 as a proof text to say that works are proof of salvation is a false premise, knowing that the audience spoken to are saved believers already who are being instructed in what to do now that they are saved. This passage does not touch on proving salvation, nor the requirements to keep salvation. James is not saying that our works makes us righteous before God, but that real saving faith is demonstrated by good works. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ always results in good works. The person who claims to be a Christian but lives in willful disobedience to Christ has a false or dead faith and is not saved. So Pastor Nelson stirs up quite some confusion. On the one hand, he says works doesn't make anyone righteous, i.e. works cannot save you. However, then he turns around and says that if this person's faith does not produce works, he or she is not truly saved. The person who claims to be a Christian but lives in willful disobedience to Christ has a false or dead faith and is not saved. Which is another variation of Lordship Salvation, a salvation that proves true now that you are saved. That simply is not biblical salvation as it pertains to this church age where we are saved by grace through faith, nor is that the message of James 2. More on that later. James contrasts two different types of faith, true faith that saves and false faith that is dead. Many profess to be Christians, but their lives and priorities indicate otherwise. Our works or our righteousness are like filthy rags in the eyes of the Most High God of the Bible. And there is nothing in our flesh that can please our Lord 
period. The Word of God says in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And keep that in mind when the Word of God says, secondly, that all the good works a believer produces after his or her salvation is the work of the Lord Himself through the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit. As we read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now that we are saved by grace through faith, we are to walk in faith, walk in spirit, knowing we can also choose to walk in our flesh. However, if we walk in our flesh, we will not be able to be God's workmanship. Here's another verse, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is the Most High God himself inside of that saved believer, as that believer's body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who have begun a good work and will perform that good work until the day of Jesus Christ. The moment we believed in the gospel of Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, we were saved by grace through faith, justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, saved and sealed until the day of redemption. But let us not be under any illusion. We were born in sin because of our flesh nature, and we will still be able to sin in the flesh for as long as we live. That flesh is more than capable of sin. As written in Proverbs 24 verse 9, the thought of foolishness is sin. Now, any human in the whole world has about 12 to 60,000 thoughts per day. Do you think all those thoughts are godly? Do you think all those thoughts are spiritual by nature? You see, that is the deception of lordship salvation or any form of works-based salvation either prior or after salvation in order to prove a quote-unquote genuine salvation. Because even if we do good works after our salvation, it is the most high God of the Bible who does the work, so he deserves all the credit and the glory, not us. Now with that in mind, let us go back to the passage at hand and let's examine James chapter 2 starting in verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? Verse 16, And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? So just as mentioned in verse 14, the author James asks the question, What doth it profit? twice. This passage in James chapter 2 deals with how profitable a believer's faith is towards others when his or her faith is accompanied by works. If a saved believer does not show works, his or her faith is unprofitable for others. But that does not prove that that person is all of a sudden unsaved. Verse 17, even so faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Brethren, we work because we are saved not to be saved, not to stay saved. We read further on in James chapter 2, verses 18 to 20. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? As saved believers in Christ, we work to help the lost by sharing the gospel of Christ. As saved believers in Christ, we work to help grow new believers in their faith in Christ. A man's faith can be profitable in sharing the gospel by street preaching or soul winning. A man's faith can be profitable for the sick who need prayer. A man's faith can be profitable for teaching correct biblical doctrine. That is the nature of the work the author James is referring to, a work that is profitable towards others because of that man's faith. Now let's read on from verse 21 onwards. Was not Abraham our father justified by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, 
and he was called the friend of God. Yea, see then, how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Now with this example of Abraham as the friend of God in mind, let us read Romans chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, brethren, justifies us in the eyes of the Most High God, which leads to salvation. However, the works that are the fruit of that faith justifies us in the sight of men, which leads to profitability towards others. A saved individual can read James chapter 2 and take the lessons that works can help others grow in Christ. Works can help an unsaved person to get saved. Works can help a new believer to grow his or her faith. Works can be profitable to other brethren who need ministering or edification. But James 2 is not a proof text to teach that salvation is achieved by works, nor that salvation can only be kept by words. We are saved by grace through faith, and we can choose to walk in God's workmanship by helping others. We can choose to walk in the Spirit. On the flip side, a saved believer can also walk in flesh, which means not helping others. So as a saved believer in Christ, you're either profitable to others or you're not in which case your faith is dead. I hope this video was a blessing to you and I pray that the Holy Spirit may continue to help you grow in His Word and in your faith. Thanks so much for watching, sharing, and liking in advance. It helps the channel out a lot and we'll see each other on the next Rightly Dividing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today's video. I hope this was a blessing to anyone listening, I pray that you will continue to teach by the guidance of your Holy Spirit so that we can all grow in grace and be profitable to others. Forgive us for our shortcomings, Lord, for we are far from perfect, so your will may be done. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.